Hello, traders. Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com, November 19th, 2023. And this week, we'll discuss the markets which are overbought. We pinned at 4,500, and typically after a big OPEX, we see a little bit of weakness for the next few days. So we're looking for realized volatility to spike, and we'll be holding back on size using a stricter criteria for credit spreads and potentially going long vega with long options or long volatility futures, depending, of course, what happens on Monday, Tuesday. Now that Friday's OPEX is out of the way, we are anticipating we could see a few days of weakness with stocks overbought, which we'll cover in a minute. And that the next triple witching, December 15th, OPEX is the largest by far, with the S&P closing at 45.14, just shy of the JP Morgan short collar overhead at 44.50. Additionally, that short call is now in play, even though it's five weeks away from expiration. In itself, this offers some resistance at that 45.15 level. With that December OPEX, we also have the S&P 500 flagging at a previous resistance level below the 45.50. The call wall shifted up from 4,500 to 4,550, while at the same time RSI is near 70. We have volume well above average for four days last week stochastics embedded and macd appears to be peaking a little bit but overall we look like we could uh, flag here a couple more days maybe see some weakness given what we typically see after a major monthly opex with stocks overbought we need to keep an eye on stochastics especially in sectors that are overbought you can see, for example, real estate, transports, industrials, financials, just about every sector is overbought with few exceptions. We did have retail leading last week, so that's a possible follow through, even though it is a bit overbought. So be careful starting off the week and keep an eye on the big cap tech names, the top 10 that are in the New York FANG index. RSI is above 70. MACD has been on the move for three weeks and stochastics has been embedded for the past two weeks setting up either a continuation on this embedding like we did see back in may or potential for this to pull back a little bit like it did back over here in march and april that should give you a pretty good idea what to expect on monday we also saw small caps get a nice bounce last week i did take profits on the 1229 expiration Iron Condor with the expectation of taking a little bit tighter, maybe the 190, 195, and 165, 160 instead of this Condor I had on last time. This did result in a profit as price action stays inside of this range. I'm looking to do this again, but just with tighter strikes going into the same expiration at the end of the year. Growth stocks and value both Pulling away from the 21 EMA, I'm anticipating that we could see value hit resistance right here and maybe pull back a little bit into that window of weakness Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If not, if it breaks above this pivot, then we'll know that value is being bought up into year end. We also have the same condition on growth, SMH, XLK, software, cloud, etc., Looking for resistance right along this area. If we don't see resistance and we break out, then that'll give you all the information you need going forward. Additional considerations. We can see the number of stocks above the 50-day have moved from 10% up to 70% back above their 50-day. And in the lower panel, we can see that we went from 24% the last week of October to 54% of stocks above their 200-day into Friday's OPEX. Therefore, it'll be important to see if S&P Equal Weight Index can get through the 200-day, the red line, along with breadth potentially improving. If we broaden out and look at the small caps, mid caps, and the S&P large caps, we can see that we're obviously turning the corner. 
the histogram is above the zero line and that horizontal at two, which is telling us this could continue, given maybe a little weakness on Monday, Tuesday. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it's something that we're prepared for if it does. Bottom line, S&P 1500 composite is bullish going into the week. I also don't want to come across as overly bullish, but I'm looking at price action. We can see that the XII, the 75 stocks most commonly held in institutions' core portfolios, is near a double top. Resistance. Bollinger Bands are wide, telling you volatility is very high. The momentum indicators in the lower panel, that's the rate of change. You can see that we're clearly very bullish and we haven't started to peak yet like we did back here in June where we had this little pullback for several days. Or like here in July where the markets topped previously. Finally, we have breadth improving. We can see with the advanced decline percent, taking the advancing stocks, dividing it by the declining stocks as a percentage, the 10-day EMA, starting to see a move higher for the big caps, small caps, mid caps, and NASDAQ in descending order. In addition, the NASDAQ McClellan oscillator is bullish and continues. I'm looking at the black line. NASI the summation index for the NASDAQ is also bullish. It's the first time it's been bullish since the bearish crossover in late July. In addition to the NIMO, the New York Stock Exchange McClellan Oscillator is bullish, moving higher. You can see NICE, the summation index, telling you the same thing. The last time it crossed over was in June. That led to a rally that lasted about three or four weeks. Not straight up. Something that we might see again going into the last few weeks of the year. Overall, we have 16 bullish indicators. Two are neutral and two are bearish. With the latter, it's mainly because of the overbought conditions with all sectors overbought. Most stocks are overbought. So we're left with mostly a bullish condition look, looking for a little weakness to start off on Monday. When we look at bonds, in particular, 10-year yield, we can see what looks like a head and shoulders top with a left shoulder to begin October, the head in mid-October, and the most recent right shoulder to begin November. If we do see this play out, a measured move typically from the head down to the neckline would give us a move down to the 200-day moving average. We can see that RSI suggests as much, MACD as well, with the condition in stochastics set up similar to what we had back in December of last year, where we did see continuous weakness for several weeks and made a lower low. So we're in a similar condition that we saw last year where we could see more weakness. So if that does play out, that would be bullish for equities into year-end. We have the same idea on the U.S. dollar. That continues lower. You can see RSI continues to drift. The last two occasions with the red arrows led to weakness in the dollar. That also gave us a reason to be bullish for equities as the dollar pulls back. We're right above the 200-day moving average at 103.50. So that could offer some support over the next few trading days. And with the dollar lower, we have copper moving higher. This is economically sensitive. If this continues to move back into the up to threes and fours, that would be bullish going into year end as well. With the dollar moving lower, it takes more dollars to buy the same amount of gold. So we could see gold continue higher. Look for a breakout above 2020, perhaps testing 52 week highs. Finally, we have Brent and West Texas crude moving lower below the 50, 200 day in a downward trend. We could be headed down to this lower 70 level, which would be an area that the White House is looking to begin filling the strategic petroleum reserve in the low 70s. So that's a possibility going forward. Keep in mind, stocks are overbought. We can see RSI above 70. Amphistar is flagging. Stochastics embedded above 80. Could stay embedded like it did back in May, June and see a follow through. The risk is higher that this could turn over. 
and price action could pull back over the next several days given the OPEX on Friday. In addition, most stocks look this way. Here's Appfolio. Stochastic's overbought, turning down. You can see prices starting to weaken. Just about every stock looks this way. Arista Networks, 921.50, 200-day are up and to the right. RSI could stay embedded. We could break out. There's nothing that says that we have to pull back, but Stochastics is embedded and could turn down. If we didn't see this across multiple stocks, then I'd be less concerned. But we don't really have much in the way of oversold and turning back up from 20 like we did three weeks ago that led to the current rally. Stocks like Comfort Systems, FIX, pulling back for the last three trading days. Volume was well above average on Wednesday. Note Stochastics is turning down. This is pretty much the condition on all sectors and most stocks that we're looking at for this week. There are some exceptions, however, like Coop. This is a mortgage company, it happens to hold our mortgage. I was doing a little research to find out that they actually buy mortgages whose customers have an 800 or higher credit score. So when they bought us out, that makes sense. Not sure why Wells Fargo would let us go because I have such a high credit score. Maybe it's because they got some sort of incentive or a buyout from Cooper. I don't know. But the point is, is Cooper. Nice cup pattern. Look at Stochastics turning up. Very rare this week to see some of these stocks moving higher. Maybe other mortgage companies. Just pointing out this mortgage company that showed up on an oversold stochastic scan. Looks good for a breakout above 59.60. Additional stocks have been trading on the IBD 50 like CrowdStrike. At 52-week highs, Stochastics embedded. The last time it was embedded and turned down the second week of October. We flattened out and then pulled back. So there's that heightened risk that we need to be concerned with after the OPEX that happened on Friday. Decker's Outdoors, this has been doing very well from earnings, that gap up and follow through. However, all of the indicators are starting to reset now from overbought. Just be careful. If you have a position like this, maybe you want to sell some covered calls up here or maybe you sell a call credit spread and look for prices to pull back and capitalize on that weakness. Datadog also on the IBD 50, RSI is embedded, showing muscle. Stochastics and MACD look like they're starting to peak. Look at the histogram on MACD, starting to shorten. The volume is tapering off. So maybe this flag can hold. We typically want to see volume taper off on a flag and then pop volume pick up again and pop. So maybe Stochastics pulls back a little bit and volume continues to taper off showing institutions aren't selling positions. They're just waiting it out. If you have a position in Datadog, maybe you want to consider selling some cover calls up here, maybe the 112, 50, or 15. Wait for stock to pull back. Buy those cover calls back on a bounce, creating your own dividend. Another IBD 50 stock, D-Local. Looks pretty good on the pattern. RSI could move a bit higher. We're watching these volume by price bands and a Kirby overhead. Trying to move above the 50-day, but Stochastics, again, overbought. Back here in July, it got overbought just like it is now. Managed to move higher for a week or so. So if it wasn't for this call-heavy OPEX with stocks fading and closing out of the money, expiring worthless on Friday, we'd look to see prices be a little bit weaker until we can see what kind of options build into this next few trading days. While that might sound a little confusing, we're just keeping an eye on stocks that seem overbought and a little bit overvalued at the moment. Looking for these to pull back a little bit. Doesn't mean it has to happen, but look at Stochastics again and MACD. It's just a matter of time. We'll know exactly what to expect probably by Wednesday, if not Tuesday or earlier. Some of the energy names are picking up after fading in the previous week. We can see... Dorian, LPG, transports liquid natural gas. MACD's turned back up. Stochastics is turned up and volume picked up. So maybe this continues higher and breaks out above 40. DraftKings, another example. 921.50, 200-day, all turned up and to the right. You can see volume by price is showing there's very little supply up here. Perhaps DraftKings can continue to embed like it did back over here in February and March. 
leading to higher prices. We're in an area where there's very little supply. Stochastics is embedded, similar to what it was like in July. We continue to move sideways to slightly higher, expecting that something like that might happen on DraftKings. Now, again, if we start to see volume coming in and we break above these pivot levels and Stochastics stays embedded, along with RSI above 70, then maybe we have all the information we need going forward. Okay, traders, that's going to do it for me. This is Cousin Vinny coming to you from the closingprint.com with your weekend video newsletter for Sunday, the 19th of November. Do keep an eye on the stocks that are on the list here, IBD50, and stocks that are showing rising profit estimates. One thing I failed to mention is that we had another 238 stocks showing improving earnings going forward, not only for this quarter, but for next year. These are after analysts have met with the companies. Note some of the ones that recently have reported in the retail sector like Urban Outfitters, Abercrombie & Fitch, and others that may see a follow-through this week. I'll send out a watch list later tonight around 12 midnight on the East Coast, around 9 o'clock on the West Coast. So be sure to check your inbox for that. Otherwise, stay safe. Remember to start off the week a little more cautious and we'll read what the institutions are doing starting off on Monday. Take care. We'll see you in the morning. Ciao.